What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and I'm recording this video because someone hit me up on social media and they said, hey look, I got a product that I'm trying to sell to uh, a business and uh, I'm having trouble finding what the perfect price is. And this question was kind of vague, right? Because I don't know if they have been talking to a business. As of right now, they haven't messaged me back. I don't know if they've been talking to a business and the business is like, well, how much do you charge? And they're trying to come up with the price or they're trying to come up with a product or a service to sell to businesses in this industry. Here's the deal with pricing. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Price does not matter in the absence of value. So what, what, this, what this means is that nobody spends money on anything unless it brings, it gives them something in return, right? And this is where value is generated. Value is a measure of worth and that is subjective. It changes from person to person. To some people, like a thousand dollar, a hundred thousand dollar car is worth it. But to other people, a hundred thousand dollar car isn't worth it. So it doesn't, it doesn't, how do, how do I put this, right? To some people, the $100,000 car provides more value than the $10,000 car. They both do the same thing, right? They'll get you from point A to point B. Maybe the $100,000 car goes faster. But let's say if it were apples to apples, right? Both cars, they, they, they do the same thing, but, uh, but, one, but, the, but the brand name's different, right? For some people, right, the brand name adds value, and they'll spend money on that. And some people, they just won't, right? And then you have it and, and you'll have people in certain situations where like they have more than enough. They like they can afford to buy 10, 20, 100, 1,000, 100,000 dollar cars. And they'll they won't they'll never buy one because to them, cars aren't valuable. And then you will have people who have who can't who can barely afford who can barely afford, a, a, you know, one car. Right. And they'll go out and they'll buy the car. And some people they'll buy two if they can. Um. Because for them, like for whatever reason, the car is more valuable to them. So they're willing to to spend their money on that. The reason why the reason why I bring that up is because we get so caught up on what we should charge when what we should charge is not important at all. Because here's here's the here's the thing, right? We are stuck on price. We're trying to figure out what to charge people because we believe the price is going to get them to make a decision. Right. We may not we may not be doing this consciously, but subconsciously. We believe that the right price is going to make someone make a buying decision. And we've been programmed like this. We've been programmed by the education system. We've been programmed by the media. We've been programmed by our friends and families, by our employers. Most people, there's people in this world, subset of people who understand exactly what's going on. They understand exactly what the game is. And when you meet them, you know because they won't ask you about price. They won't say, or, or they'll either, they may ask you up front just to see what your response is, right? But they're operating on a whole different level, a whole different level. And, I'm, and there, there's some people like, they have plenty of money and they'll ask you, hey, what's this cost, right? Um, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people, they don't, they don't care what the cost is. They just care about the value. Like take, a good example is books. A good example is books. Somebody may, Somebody may look at this book, Principles by Ray Dalio, and I don't know. Typically, the price is in the book somewhere. Um, so this is this is a thirty dollar book, and I have two of these. I have one online. I, I've got like a Kindle version, and then I have the I have the printed copy. And what I try to do, like, um, is I try to I try to get printed copies of all the of all the books. Now I haven't bought them, bought them all because I haven't reached the level that I want to be at financially um, just to be able to go out and buy books at one point I was doing this but now that I'm out on my own and I'm starting my own business things are things are tight um, so I can't go out and buy the books that books that I want but this is a $30 book and some people will go I would never ever 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 spend $30 on a book never right but here's the deal right it's not about the book right it's not about what the book costs it's about what's inside of the book if I read this book, this $30 book, and I find an idea in here, or, or there's some sort of revelation that opens my mind, and I go on and I use it to make, you know, $100,000, $30 was cheap. I didn't pay enough. This should have been a $10,000 book, 
but I got it for 30 bucks. It's a bargain that's a steal, right? So you don't have to think about things like that, but that's how you should think about things like that. I mean, that's how you should think about things. You have to deprogram your mind. So the main thing here is when we are trying to get clients or we're trying to figure out what to charge, we need to just stop trying to figure out what to charge. We need to figure out what is valuable to the client. And the only way we can do that is to know who they are, right? Who is our ideal customer? Who are we trying to sell this stuff to? And then from there, you can go out and you can act. Well, you can do one of two things. You can look at what everybody else is selling and you can attempt to offer something of more value at the same price that everybody else is selling at. Or, or depending on what it is you're trying to sell, what your business is, you just go to the business and you just ask them, right? And I, I don't mean like ask them, ask them outright, like how much should I charge? Or, or don't ask them, how much do you want to pay? You should never be talking about charging and, and, and paying or any of this stuff. You want to identify a problem, right? So let's say, for instance, we want to, we want to sell a website to a restaurant. So first we have to figure out, you know, what exactly it is we're selling and to what exactly what type of restaurant we want to sell it to. So we're selling websites. Okay, so, but I mean like specifically, right? What kind of website are we selling, right? Is it going to be a landing page and that's it, right? We're going to have a landing page, a contact page, a menu, um, is, is some other stuff, right? And so, but we have to decide of what, what, of, what of these we're going to do because this is going to determine exactly who our target customer is. Maybe all we do is landing pages, right? And so we have to figure out, do we want to sell these landing pages to other marketing companies that build websites for restaurants or do we want to sell them directly to restaurants? And then what would the value proposition be for that particular restaurant? How would this landing page enhance their lives? Could it, would it save them money? Is it going to earn them more money? Is it going to get them more business? I don't know. You have to determine that. But let's just say I say, you know, the, the web pages that I build, they rank you higher in local search, which means you should get more customers to your business month over month um and now they're going to be like okay all right you know so 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 when i go out to the restaurant when i call them on the phone or when i when i when i send them an email when i'm sitting in the restaurant i'm like hey can i talk to the manager or whatever and i'm like hey you know i really like this place i come here all the time um I checked out your website and you could be getting way more business. You're just not getting in front of enough people. Is there is there a time we can sit down and like, you know, you know, talk about how possibly I might be able to help you get more customers? And you know, either they're gonna say yes or no. If they say no, then fine, fantastic, right? Never eat there again. Okay. Um, if they say yeah, sure, right, set up a time. Oh, well, let me get your number, set up a time, and then when you go in, all you do is ask questions. All you do is ask questions. Now, some people are gonna mess this up, right? And there's some there's a few steps in this process. So in future videos, um, I think I'm gonna make this like a three-part series because I don't want these videos to be too long. I want people to be able to watch my content uh, in bite-sized chunks. Um, so in the in the next video, what we'll do is we'll cover how how you begin this process when you go sit down in a meeting with the potential client, right? And and you're not thinking of price like like get price out of your mind, get price out of your mind, and we'll cover that in the next video. Why you don't want to be thinking about price? Because I, I mean it gets it gets wild, team. Uh, the universe operates in a certain kind of way and, and without getting too spiritual and going like deep down the rabbit hole, just know that everything that exists around us, everything you can see around you right now, right? Whatever you're watching this video on was an idea in somebody's head. They thought about it and they thought about it so hard, so hard. They thought about it so hard that it became a reality. And it exists now. We can touch it. We can taste it. We can smell it. We can feel it. When we focus our minds on something, no matter what it is, we can make it a reality either directly or indirectly. So take that away, team. I will see you in the next video. Um, and I'll put this in like a three video playlist or something like that. But in the next one, we're going to talk about what to do after you've got someone to agree to sit down and talk with you more about what it is you have to offer. Um, yeah. So we'll just leave it at that, team. I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. Like this video so YouTube knows to show it to more people like you who want to who want to, to, to grow a business, build an empire, whatever it is you want to do. Um, but then also subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you're notified when, the, when, I, when I post new videos, team. All right. So I will see you in the next video.